Now we're actually to the second exercise we're going to look at. In this particular exercise, now we have no connectivity. Now we show up and the task for the day is just to update the iOS images on all the devices. And there's a number of them, so it'll take some time, but you know, it's not an urgent matter. And about halfway through the day, a call comes in, a phone call, indicating that everything is down and users are furious. And there's really no explanation for this one. So same process. We'll pick up the ticket and assign it. We'll let the requester know we're working on it, and we would have done that in the phone call, and then perform troubleshooting. Notes from call with Yosemite Sam again. This is from an actual phone call. Now everything is down. Users can still print, but nothing else. So it looks like a huge outage might be the time to fire the tier one guy that seems to be causing these, which isn't me. So now, this time, it's not just everything seems to be down. So they can't even get to anything else on the campus. So now we're going to go back to some of these devices we were looking at before. And this time, we were actually told that users aren't even getting DHCP addresses. So something's up. So here, again, we start with the physical layer. You do a show IP interface brief, simply because it'll give us the quickest summary and we're showing up up so we could just do a, another show interfaces if we want to this time we'll look at things a little more in a little more detailed fashion but it's up up all these are up up now if we wanted to eliminate anything that could be a potential problem we could do show controllers Ethernet, that'd be fast Ethernet actually. Zero, zero. It's showing all sorts of things. We're not getting collisions. It's auto negotiated. It's all sorts of information here. We could just basically say that the problem doesn't seem to be physical. So let's do show CDP neighbors. We can still see switch 1-3, so we know layer 2 is working. Let's do ping 192.168.11. Nothing. Now let's see if VLAN 11 is doing the same thing. Nothing. So go back to our plan here. All pings are failing. Show IP EIGRP interfaces. So all our interfaces are up, you know, they're configured correctly. Routing's working, but we're not seeing anything. Notice the zero peer show IP EIGRP neighbors. Show IP route. And everything does really seem to be down. So all we're getting is local routes. So let's see if the problem is a little more widespread. Now we can go back to router 1-1, one -one, which is our head end router. Let's see if there's a problem there. Show IP interface brief. Everything's up. Show IP route. Oh, and we have all sorts of routes. Let's see if the internet's working from here. Ping 216.145.1.2. And it is. Let's see, ping 192.168. One, two, one, three, which is router three, which we know is not working. Now let's do one, one, one. That's switch one, switch two. It's working. Switch three, because these are all in the path. Nothing. So looking at this, the problem seems to indicate that something between switch 2 and switch 3 is not working correctly. So that gives us at least something to go on. There's switch 3. Show run. Show run. So let's go back to our plan. So we do show CDP neighbors. We see everything upstream. Actually, we don't. Look at this. We see downstream, but not upstream. 
So it is between switch 1-3 and 1-2. Let's do show spanning tree. And it's not showing anything for spanning tree. So it looks like a problem. So let's do, let's check 192.168.11. That's not working. So let's go to switch 1-2 and just do a few tests. Ping 192.168.11 and 11-1. So those are working. Show CDP neighbors. And notice switch 1-3 is missing here. We do show spanning tree. Everything seems to be working as expected. Now let's do show interfaces trunk. And it seems like these things are working the way you'd expect them to. So you sus looking at this, you get the idea that the problem may be indeed on switch 1-2. Let's go back to our plan here. Let's just verify on switch 3. Show VTP status, because this would cause a problem. Everything's operational. Domain name's correct. So something must be up. So this is the point at which we could actually do a running configuration check. So we've got our port channel configured. Now notice here, 23 and 24, this is our link to switch 1-2. And there's two things here that should jump out. First of all, the channel group 4 mode on tells you that this is part of the upstream ether channel trunk. But notice here, an access VLAN has been configured. So this will not be a trunk the way it's supposed to. So now it's like, I think we found the problem. So configure terminal, interface, range, which is a very helpful command because you can configure multiple interfaces at once. 23, space, dash, 24, switch port, trunk, encapsulation, Remember, there's only one encapsulation, so that doesn't help us. Switch port mode, trunk. Now look, our port channel's back up. Now I show CDP neighbors. It's still only showing. Remember, CDP takes a little while to recover. While we're doing this, we could actually go back to router 1-3, show CDP neighbors. Show IP interface, actually show IP EIGRP interface. Aha, notice now everything has come back up. Show IP route. Now we're showing all sorts of things. So now let's do ping 192.168.11.1. Now we've got connectivity. Ping 216.145.1.2, and things are back up. So now we can go back down here to our root cause analysis. We were able to isolate this to switch 1 3. It was layer 2. Here it was VLAN and trunking configuration. We don't really know who did it, but there had to be something wrong. In this case, it was port mode. And it was established by restoring the original trunking mode configuration on the switch port. Now we can go back. We can edit. Now we can actually list it as resolved. Now we go back and there's just one ticket opened. And so we've been able now to successfully resolve that issue. So now our last situation that we're going to troubleshoot is different than the other two. The network is not hard down, but there's a performance issue. So in this particular setting, the immediate situation is the network's been operating flawlessly for a week. Everybody's been happy. We're just about ready to go to lunch. And as we're heading out the door, a ticket comes in talking about network slowness. Unfortunately, it kind of ruins everything. 
as far as the lunch goes, but it's time to take care of business. And just through the process of discovery, we figure out that there's been some minor changes made in the network, but we're not sure what they are. So we're going to pick up the ticket, assign it, and then begin the troubleshooting and resolution process. So now we are in looking at our trouble ticketing system. Not a huge emergency, but everything is running slowly. So that's the symptom they're giving. Can you fix this? I hate you, rabbit. Had to add that because the Yosemite Sam always said that. So we have a network slowness issue. It's not super critical. Notice priority normal, but does need to be taken care of. So we're going to go to our console. Now we're going to look at our various screens. Now we always start with closest point of the problem, which is router 1-3. Now we've already established that everything from a workstation point is working. It's We know that there's connectivity to the internet. We know there is connectivity to the workstations. There's full reachability, so it's not any kind of a routing issue. So at this point, we can actually do a little bit. We always just want to start with show IP interface brief, see if for some reason anything is out of order. All the pertinent interfaces are up and running. Check out layer two, show CDP neighbors. That's working. Show IP EIGRP interfaces and neighbors. And show IP route. And everything's working the way it's supposed to. So let's do a ping test 216.145.1.2. Could be anything as far as an IP address. It's just a test point. And here, the ping is slower than we're expecting from previous issues. So now the question becomes, where is the performance issue? So another thing to do at this point is to try the same thing from router 1-1. So ping 216.145.1.2. Less for sure. So there's somewhere between switch 1-1, excuse me, router 1-1, all the way back through the switch fabric to router 1-3 where there's a problem. It could be at router 1-3, or it could be in the switching fabric. So let's do a show running configuration. And what we would look for is anything that would limit traffic, like a rate limiting statement or something of that nature. No kind of filtering, no access list, nothing on the outbound interfaces. Everything appears to be completely in order on this device. So we've basically eliminated this as the cause. So now I go to switch 1-3, ping 192, oops, 216.145.1.2. Let's do a show run. Oh, notice the VLAN interface here is shut down. So that would explain why I'm not able to ping out. Now shut. Now let's try that again. And it works. Again, a little bit slower than what we were kind of looking at. So now we could do show CDP neighbors. Got our ether channel links upstream to the next. So that seems to be in order. Let's do show spanning tree. Port channel is up and running, so we don't have to worry about that. So looks like we've got full bandwidth going up there. So we don't have to worry about that. Now let's go to switch 1-2. Show CDP neighbors. Got our two connections upstream to switch 1-1. So we look like we're doing really well. So let's do show spanning tree. That's VLAN 1. Here's VLAN 11. Now, here's the thing that's interesting to notice. In our CDP neighbors back up here, group of two, group of two, group of two. These are all Ether channel configurations. But now, when we look down in spanning tree, we see two port channels. But these are being listed as one. There's two separate ones. This should be a port channel. So let's look and see if something is awry here. Because if there's either channel, double the bandwidth between all the switches, but up to this one, this becomes the constrained bandwidth area. So here are the two interfaces. And there is no 
channel group. Notice here, here's one of the other channels going to another switch, going to another switch. The channel group configuration is missing. So we realize that for some reason it's been deleted. So we can do interface range FA0 slash 1 to 0 to 2. Now we've already got switch port mode trunk. All we need to do is channel group 1 mode on. And notice here, it's brought the port channel up. But on switch 1 1, and you'll see here, notice one of these isn't blocking because it's not an ether channel. So now we can do configure terminal interface gigabit 0 slash 15 channel group 1 mode on and on 17 mode on. Now do show CDP neighbors Show spanning tree. Notice that the port channel is in learning state. Now it's back up. Now look, port channel one. Now if we go back to router one three and we do our ping again, we've taken time off of that which means the problem was that the ether channel had been deleted between the switches and had degraded the bandwidth. So now we can actually go back to our solution here. Root cause analysis. Devices switch one and switch two, although you could just say it was switch two because the configuration, actually the configuration had been deleted from both. Layer two ether channel, deleted configuration, not sure how it happened. And then it was accomplished by restoring the ether channel functionality with the channel group one mode on command.